Hi, my name is Lucian Tudose and I'm senior engineer at RKB Bearing Industries. The topic of today's web seminar is Pareto approach in multi-objective optimal design of rolling bearings. The structure of multi-objective optimization problem is just a little bit different than the structure of mono-objective optimization and the difference consists in the presence of several objective functions that have to be minimized or maximized. In case of MOO problem, optimizing means finding a solution having values for all objective functions that satisfy the decision maker because there are many and very important more likely conflicting objectives to be optimized simultaneously, there is no longer a single optimal solution, but rather a whole set of possible solutions of equivalent quality. However, one of the most usual approaches to deal with these multi-objective problems is to aggregate the various individual objective into a unique function in order to form a single objective optimization problem. Almost always, since the involved function have different values, obviously for the same argument, it is necessary to somehow normalize their values. The disadvantages of aggregate function method, there are at least three disadvantages disadvantages. Normalization of function value means to know the maximum or minimum of the respective function, which is almost always impossible. It is necessary to define a priori a compromise between the objective considered. And finally, if the relative importance of the criteria is changed, a new optimization run needs to be carried out. Another possible approach, Pareto approach, takes advantages of the fact that evolutionary algorithms work with a population of points processed in each iteration, yielding a set of non-dominating vectors called Pareto optimal solutions. In this case, all the objectives are simultaneously optimized. The term Pareto efficiency, or if you prefer Pareto optimality, is named after the Italian economist Wilfredo Pareto, and is defined as the efficiency of a market which is an, an unable to produce more from the same level of input without reducing the output of another product. Please note that this definition is dated back to 1906. In other words, given a set of alternative allocation of goods for a set of individuals, a change from one allocation to another that makes at least one individual better off without making any other individual worse off is called a Pareto improvement or a Pareto optimal move. A certain allocation is defined as Pareto efficient or Pareto optimal when no further Pareto improvements can be made. Here, the Pareto set or Pareto frontier is the set of choices that are Pareto efficient. The Pareto frontier is particularly very useful in engineering. By restricting attention to the set of choices that are Pareto efficient, a designer can make trade-offs within this set rather than considering the full range of every parameter. Generally speaking, in MOO problems, two different solutions are related to each other in two possible ways. Either none dominate the other or none of them is dominated. Some definitions, some mathematical definitions, are needed in this point. For a multi-objective problem, let F be the set of feasible solution and X1 and X2, two candidates from F. It is said that, and this equation describes the situation, that X1 is at dominate X2 for minimizing when X1 is at least as good as X2 in all objectives, but there is at least one objective according to which X1 is better than X2. For a multi-objective optimization problem, a given solution X star is Pareto optimal 
if and only if there is no vector x of f so that x dominates x star. Also, for a multi-objective optimization problem, the Pareto optimal set contains all the non-dominated candidate solution, and the Pareto front is its image in the function space. Here in the scheme in the left, on the left, you can see a set of candidate solution and the Pareto front, this one, and if you pay some attention, you will see that candidates A and B do not dominate each other because A is better than B in objective one in terms of minimizing, and B is better than A in objective two. But either A and B or any other candidate solution along the Pareto front dominate C or the other candidate solution. The set of Pareto solution consists of good solution where none can be said to be better than the other. That is the set of non-dominated solution. The main impro important problem here is how to obtain the Pareto set and consequently the Pareto front. RKB thinks that the most convenient way to obtain the Pareto set and the Pareto front, it's via evolutionary algorithms. Here you have the scheme of a very simple evolutionary algorithm and how it works, it was explained in a previous web seminar. Challenges of solving MOOP via evolutionary algorithm, at least three. The first one is how to accomplish fine fitness assignment and selection in order to guide the, the search toward the Pareto optimal set. The second one is how to maintain a diverse population in order to prevent premature convergence and achieve a well-distributed trade-off front. And the third, at least but not the last, how to prevent during the successive generations that some good solutions are lost. The first question of our answer is that the accomplishment of each generation of properly ranked population. A certain individual is ranked according to the respective layer it belongs to and the level of constraint violation. To maintain good diversity of the population is necessary to have a density estimation operator such as, for example, the well-known niching operator. Instead of this method, use an original, simple, but very powerful and efficient clustering method. The cluster along the front with few individuals are automatically promoted and their fitness is increased. The third problem is usually solved by keeping the best solution found so far in an archive in order to ensure that the good individual do not get lost by mutation or recombination. To speed up the optimization, we flagged the best individuals and promoted them by artificially increasing their fitness. As an example, we present here the multi-objective optimization of NP1090 cylindrical roller bearing, which scheme are presented on the left. The main dimension are presented in two in those, these two panels here. And here in the center part, you find the most important geometrical parameter, the complex factor gamma. The roller of the bearing is cylindrical, as you can see, and it's crowned. And we have to distinguish between the roller length and the effective roller length. The Roller crown radius, it's uh, according to the diameter uh, of the bearing, of the roller. Another very important parameter, geometrical parameter, is the circular, circumferential distance between two neighbor rollers. In fact, the tenant thickness. Here you have the exact formula of this thickness. And using an approximative one, 
we, we was able to find the number of the roller of the bearing. With this, eventually, we jumped to the conclusion that the internal geometry of the bearing it is uniquely described by means of only three genes. The complex factor gamma I already mentioned, the roller diameter and the roller length. The next step in our approach is to set up the objective function. First of all, we focused on the basic dynamic load rating. And here you have the equation of this basic dynamic load rating as a function of those three already mentioned gene or variable, if you prefer. This formula is according to ISO 281. Here, the complex factor FC, it's only a function of gamma. This equation is adopted from ISO TR 1281. The next issue is the minimum lubricant film thickness in, area, in the area of rolling contact. Here, according to Dawson, is the equation of this minimum lubricant film thickness as a function of four parameters, U, the speed parameter, G, the material parameter, W, the load parametric, and finally, R sub R, is reduced curvature radius of the contact. The speed parameter is a function of the reduced modulus, modulus of elasticity, of the characteristic of oil, and a function of mean rolling velocity. The material parameter is mainly a function of pressure viscosity coefficient, and the load parameter is a function of radial load acting on the most loaded roller. Unlike previous approach to this problem found in uh, open literature, we do not consider this load as a certain number, but we consider this as a fraction of the dynamic load ratio, uh, rating, sorry. We consider this fraction, uh, this fraction about 0 0.15. That means the frontier between a loaded and a very loaded bearing. Here you have some geometrical parameter. That means the reduced range of curvature. And here the mean velocity in the point of contact. With these input data, and uh, after some transformation, mathematical transformation, we obtain two objective functions. The first one, the basic dynamic load rating as a function only of gamma, L, and D. And for the minimum lubricant film thickness, we consider we considered the minimum lubricant film in inner ring raceway roller contact and the minimum lubricant film in outer ring raceway roller line contact. And the objective function was the minimum of these two values. So here you have the, the expression, the mathematical expression of the second objective. Obviously, we intend to maximize this in order to obtain a better behavior of the bearing. An important issue in uh, multi-objective optimization is that the, the objective should be in conflict. And here would, we demonstrated that the first objective and the second one are obviously in conflict. Since our software is dedicated to minimizing, we final construct the two objective function, like you can see here, as the inverse of the actual objective function. An optimization, optimization is very powerful since the set of constraints are very well done, very well constructed. 
Here we considered nine constraints. Seven of them are geometrical, and the last two one are some uh, involves the loads and the forces and the stresses arose in the contact. The first two constraints refer to the roller diameter that has to be in a certain range. The second two constraints refer to the difference between the inner and the outer ring thickness, and this difference should be also be in a certain range. The circumferential distance, in fact, the tenon distance, has to be also in an imposed range. Finally, the roller length has to be less than a maximum imposed value. All these are based on our previous experience. The eighth constraints refer to the maximum hoop stress along the inner ring cross section that arose when the inner ring is pressed against the shaft. This value, this maximum hoop stress, should be less than an allowable stress, as you can see according to the formulas. And finally, the maximum hertz stress should be less than an allowable hertz stress. Here, you can see the mainframe of Cambrian platform configured for multi-objective optimization problems. And in this picture, the resulting palette of front is presented. Remember that objective one and objective two are in fact the inverse of the actual objective function. In the next picture and in this table, we present the most important discrete results. The candidate solution colored in gold is the best solution according to the thickness of the lubricant and the solution in red is the best one in terms of the dynamic load rating. In this table, you can observe that the gold solution and the red solution. In this column are plotted all the value of the minimum thickness of lubricant film, and you can see that the difference between them are only at the third decimal place. So, the dynamic load rating becomes very important and we choose for our next generation bearings the last one solution, this one colored in red. Here you have this, this, sorry, this solution presented with the main important this dimension. We can conclude that at RKB, you use the most modern, precise, and sophisticated methods in, design, in designing rolling bearings. In this case, the optimal solution found corresponds to a remarkably large dynamic radial load, load rating and a sufficiently thick lubricant film, as you can see in the previous slide. The advanced calculation of and optimization department of the RKB bearing industry is committed to improve day by day the internal geometry of its products with relevant positive consequences on the value of the basic dynamic load rating and lubricant film thickness. In doing that, it is crucial to constantly adapt the objective function and constraints to the new situation based on the gain experience and the technological advances reached both in material properties and matching technology. Thank you for your attention.